Well, hello everyone and welcome back in. This is episode two of our auto cannon, the 90 millimeter gun platform based over the Lancia truck. With the construction nearly complete, it's time to lay down some base colors. Now, I'm not terribly familiar with the Italian vehicles of World War II. I mean, of course, I've seen pictures and such, but I did a little bit of research because I wanted to know if the vehicles coming out of the factory were painted in a different color, say a dark green, and then perhaps oversprayed with the sand or tan color once they reached North Africa. As near as I can tell from my one evening of research, it seems as though the Italian vehicles came from the factory in their dark brown or sand color. So that's what I'll start with here, just a dark sand color. Practically what that means is, since I'll be working with a single base color, there's no need to do any sort of, say, hairspray chipping or fluids type chipping to make the small chips. All the weathering will be done with either a paintbrush or with the oil paints. So I'm just going to jump in and start with the gun platform, of course the biggest and most obvious piece on this vehicle. My thought here is, is that I really want to emphasize that circular design of the platform itself, and I want to portray the scuffs and scratches and the wear of the base color paint down to the metal finish here as the gun crew would work and service on the weapon. So to begin, I do just a overspray of a dark gray color. This will kind of replicate some of the scuffs, some of the darker tones, that metal finish underneath. And as I went through it, it got a little bit heavier here because I think I needed that contrast. Then over top of the gray, I just reestablish the base colors. For the actual scuffing, I wanted a softer type of appearance, something that you know, hairspray chipping doesn't give you. That's a little bit more defined chips. And so I returned to using the lacquer thinner as a paint removal tool. Of course, using lacquer thinner on your models is a pretty tricky, dangerous sort of a proposition. So care must be taken here. To ensure that I don't simply strip the paint, only a minimal amount of lacquer thinner is on the brush. The brush itself is nearly dry, just very lightly moistened. And then the dabby motion or the contact on the surface with the brush, it's ever so slight. But in the end, and this took a little bit of time, I do have a pattern on this gun platform that I think works real well with that circular pattern and shows a pattern of wear as might have been expressed by the gun crew. Let me return to the front cab. As you may recall, I left the parts unassembled for ease of painting, so now it's time to put this all together. And for the seats themselves, just a little bit of a light worn leather appearance using acrylic paints as the first layer. And just to give it a little bit of depth, I had just a quick wash with some oil paints. Then these are installed into the cab of the truck. And then next, the firewall or the front of the cab of the truck, just a little bit of wash using enamels is just enough to bring out some of the details and surface features and give it a little bit of life. Next up, I've got the windshields on the front and just a little bit of simple masking for those. Luckily, they're nice and easy, flat shapes, nice and rectangular. So this goes without much of a hitch. I was able to paint the frames and then just pull off the paint and we're ready to start installing them into the cab. There's always that sense of relief when the tape comes off and the parts, well, they look good. Next, the windscreens are attached to the cab and a little trick I've learned the hard way is to use PVA glue rather than liquid cement as any small drop, just the slightest drop of liquid cement onto the clear part will ruin them. But the PVA glue dries clear, has secure hold and there's no risk of damage. Making sure that my fingers are relatively clean, I place the windows in their locations, a little bit of pressure to make sure they're seated properly. And then I'm able to work on the cab and start to button up the crew cabin here. Before leaving the front cabin, I take a few moments to apply the decals. There's very few with this kit, aided by a little softener and setter. And now we're ready to move on. There's still a few bits and pieces of construction that I still need to take care of. But it's time to really start moving on to what will become the final presentation on this model. And for that, I'm going to really rely heavily on the use of oil paints. As I begin here, let me try to explain a little bit of where I'm trying to take this model in terms of its final presentation. I've been trying to come up with a few descriptive words that would kind of paint the picture of what the final presentation is going to look like. But I seem to be at a loss of words, so let me kind of talk about it in a roundabout way and maybe we'll get there and maybe I can find a few photographs that will explain further. So let me try this. Often when you see vehicles that are working in these types of environments, deserts and things like that, they have an accumulation of smudges and stains and blemishes and a little bit of dust accumulations and 
like I said, just discoloration. And it might be from wear and tear. It might be from where, say, crew members always have their hands and the sweat accumulates with the dust and it makes these dark stains and patterns. And that's the type of appearance that I'm going to try to work on achieving on this model through the use of the oil paints. Many, many layers to try to build that up. Okay, right on cue. Here's a couple of photographs. This gun especially is really something that really intrigues me. This kind of gritty, dirty, caked on, greasy type of dirt buildup, right? Especially down by the breach. This is something I definitely want to try to replicate on this project. The Kuba wagon shows a different type of aware, especially along the tops of the doors. This is where the crew, their sleeves and their hands have basically polished the dirt and stained the metal and the camouflage. And that's another type of effect that I want to try to capture as well. Over the course of this project, I'll come back and return to this gun shield and I'll work to refine some of the details. You know, I get things to about maybe, I don't know, 80% and then I move on to another section. And then I'm one of those that I enjoy bringing everything up kind of at the final 20% altogether as the model is just at the cusp of being finished. And that way I feel like everything is unified and tied together real nicely. Well, as long as I'm working on the gun shield, I might as well take a little bit of time and work on the gun itself. Photographs, although they're a little tough to tell on the black and white, they do show that the recoil from the gun polishes the barrel itself. And that's what I'm doing right now, is just adding a little bit of that polish finish to the barrel. As a small aside, the German 88 and the Italian 90mm are very similar in terms of performance. I mentioned that before. One of the major differences between the two guns, however, was the German 88 was a two-part barrel, so that allowed the Germans to replace the worn part of the barrel while not having to replace the other part of the barrel. Whereas the Italian cannon barrel, well, that was a single piece. So if a section became worn or damaged, or in this worst case scenario, destroyed, the entire barrel needs to be replaced. Of course, oil paints are used to weather the gun as well, and you can see from the palette behind the colors that I'll be using, and these will be consistent throughout the entire project, these colors. I'm just getting started with this project in terms of the finishing and weathering, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode. There's a lot more to come in the next episodes. We'll go through the entire process. If you have enjoyed this episode, I do encourage you to hit that like and subscribe button. It does help this video and this channel get out to more and more viewers. For those of you looking for a little bit more content and would like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon, and the link for that is below. Members there get to see the videos before they release to the public. I offer some longer form videos of tips and techniques and photographs of the projects as they are ongoing. And of course, the chat room is always open. The next episode is setting up for another painting and weathering episode, diving deeper into the oil paints and working towards finishing. But I also have some figures that I'm working on at the same time, so I'm not sure which way we'll go. We'll see how far I get with those figures. But until then, take care and happy modeling. We'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.